Hi, I'm Lindsay from Hawthorne and Lily Interiors. Today we are going to talk about the designer client relationship and Josh is building a liquor cabinet. When we left off, I was shopping in Denver for a rug for my clients. Um, we were trying to pin down some other pieces as well. The reason I wanted to go to Denver for the rug is because I thought that that would be a great starting point for their house. They were asking me to push them into some more color. So my thought was find the rug, we'll make the design. Well, I found the rug, the dream rug. Um, turns out it's really expensive. If you're looking for a really lovely rug that is great quality, you're gonna pay for that. And how much is this one? So I wanted to talk a little bit today about the client designer relationship because it's something that I am newly experiencing. I mean, I've worked with clients before, but every person is different. Every space is different. Every design is different. And so it's this really delicate dance when you're working with other people and you're working with something as personal as their space. So when I presented the design, they loved it. They loved everything I did until they saw the price tags on everything that was attached to it. So since then, we've had this back and forth dance of priorities, really, because initially it was we want really quality made things um, and we want color. And since then, there's been a lot of waffling about, okay, well, this is actually costing a lot more. And that's not to say we weren't sticking in budget. It was still within budget. But then they started just reassessing in general, do we want to keep some of our original furniture? Initially, it was we're going to buy all new things, you know, la la la, which is kind of a designer's dream. If you can start with a fresh palette, great. You can build a whole world around that. But this is the, more of the norm than the customer that's going to write me a check and say, just go do your thing. So we've had to make these adjustments along the way about the process and, you know, checkpoints. Like each room now is being broken down into its what things cost, where they want to spend the money. And so what I want to talk about as far as the designer client relationship goes is communication. Because what's really important as a client before you hire a designer is that you're very clear about what you want from your design. Is it quality made furniture that's going to last you a long time? If so, you're going to want to prepare to spend some money on those things. If it's something that you want to change out every few years or you're just not ready to make that commitment yet, great, but just be really clear with your designer about what that priority is. The second one is fluidity in the budget. Some people have a budget and they put it there because nobody really wants to go over budget ultimately, but sometimes if there's a really great piece that we find, it's an antique, it's one of a kind, people will make allowances for that. But then some other people are like, absolutely no way. Not only do we need to come into budget, we need to come into budget like before tax budget. So that's the other thing people don't think about, delivery costs, shipment costs, taxes. And so that's something you need to consider when making your budget and working with the designer also. So what's nice about having Josh in this process when I'm designing in general is that if I see a custom space that I need specific measurements for, he can work within those parameters and we can deliver something really special and one of a kind for these clients. So that's one of the things that makes our business unique. So I'm working on one of my current projects and this is an example of one of the things that we do to try to create unique pieces that um, also resonate with the customer and have a really beautiful story behind them. super cool about this piece is a lot of this wood that I'm using in here. So if you see all these, like the shelf or these bottom pieces here, um, even everything this is ringed with is all over a hundred years old. It's all off of a barn from the um, same person who's commissioning me, commissioning me to do this. It was his family's farm and uh, making this for his daughter. So it's the daughter's grandparents' farm where all of this wood is coming from, which is really, really cool. 
So currently Josh is working on a liquor cabinet for a past client of mine. On uh, the current job I'm working on, I'm trying to incorporate some of his pieces into the design. Uh, one of which is just a solid wood top to go over two Ikea uh, drawers. We didn't have a huge budget to go into the office and I'm not super stoked about <laughs> going towards Ikea. Um, not that Ikea is bad, but this is a way to sort of do an Ikea hack, right? So you take two drawers and then you put this really beautiful piece of wood over the top of it and that can be customized. So if these guys want a gray stain or if they want a deep walnut stain, we can work with that and make it look really expensive when ultimately it's very affordable. So if you're thinking about hiring a designer or if you're a designer taking on a client, I have a couple pieces of, of advice for you. One, be very, very clear in your communication. Make sure at the outset, if you're billing hourly as a designer, that you allot enough hours into your bid. Because if you say that something is gonna take me 20 hours and it ends up taking you 40, the client's not gonna be super pumped about paying that. And that just comes with experience and learning what things take in terms of time. If you're a client hiring a designer, make sure your designer is very clear to you about what their hours are going toward. So for me, sometimes it takes me eight hours to source the furniture that's going to go into a space. And sometimes people have a hard time paying for that, but you have to know that those things take time and that we as designers have access to furniture stores that maybe the regular Joe walking off the street doesn't have access to. So make sure you honor us in that process. The second part is when you're having conversations about design, out of the context of just say like, let's meet here, you wanna use phone or in-person conversations instead of text. Texting is really difficult in the business because a lot of things can be misconstrued and you can extrapolate feelings that might not be there and you might end up getting some tension between you and your designer without being there to get the verbal and non-verbal cues that come with the conversation. So it's my deepest recommendation that you communicate in person or over the phone as much as possible in lieu of texting. And I guess the third piece of advice is to be really clear about your budget constraints and how solid the budget is and so as a designer you need to really respect those parameters and try to work as best as you can within them and as a client you need to be very clear with your designer about whether or not there is wiggle room within that space and if it's a set in stone number and that is my advice for you have a good day